thumbnail, huh? But I already put all my books away. We're just gonna, we're just gonna, we're just gonna take them from the shelf and pretend because I'm a piece of shit. Don't a, I just said that so Canadian like idiot, idiot. <laughs> so I did say in my last video that that was the one where I had like super low ratings, but then I started editing, and then it, so really part three is where all my low ratings are. They're like one star to three stars. So you know you can watch me talk shit about books. You know everybody likes to talk shit once in a while. So you're welcome. <laughs> It's Jay, and this is Jay from the future because this was originally supposed to be two parts, but then I started editing, and um, it was 43 minutes long, and I was like, hmm, do I really want to have a video in two parts that are like 15 minutes each when I can just, you know, film another intro and make it three parts? So welcome to my May wrap up part three. It's happening because I don't want to make you sit through. 20 minute videos, you're welcome. So without further ado, let us get started. The next book I read was Streaks of Blue by Jack Chaucer and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I was sent a review copy of it from the author himself, so thank you Jack for sending me a copy of your book. This book follows Nicole, who is a 17 year old who attends a school in New Hampshire. When she has a strange dream about Adam Upton, a boy who she used to be friends with, planning a mass shooting for her school with his accomplice Thomas Lee Harvey, she makes it her mission to become friends with him again and try to stop him. I read this book in one sitting. The writing style flows very nicely. It's a very fast read. I felt that some of the descriptions in the book were too repetitive and they would talk about like the clothing that they were wearing a lot and it just got to the point where it was just like, okay, I understand they're wearing blue, they're wearing purple, I get it, it's fine. A lot of the characters were one-dimensional in my opinion. They were either the stereotypical bad teen or the good Samaritan and that was really their two categories. I would have liked to know more of the backstory of the characters and why they were doing what they were doing. Also, I felt that some of the dialogue was a bit forced. Teenagers don't talk the way that they were talking in the book, but there were a lot of quotes that I really liked in the book. I think the author did a great job throwing some wisdom into his writing throughout the story. I really liked the pacing of the book and how the plot developed very quickly. Overall, I think the author did a great job talking about a very difficult subject of school shootings and it was done in a way that wasn't like preachy or anything like that. The next book I read for my friend Molly over at Magical Molly so I'll leave her links down below but she's writing a book so she wanted me to beta read it for her and oh my god guys like it is good. It's called Burning Adela by Molly Likovich. I'm probably saying her last name wrong. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. It's a feminist historical fiction fantasy that follows two women who are connected through time. I didn't think I would like it as much as I did because I don't really read fantasy at all and when I do I don't really like it that much but this book was so good. The writing was amazing. I thought that it was so well done and how the story in the end connects all together. Like, like just, ugh, Molly, you kill me. Like, her book is fire. When it gets published, guys, you're gonna want to read it. I'm just saying. The next book I read was The Color Project by Sierra Abrams, and I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I absolutely loved it. It follows 17-year-old Bernice Aurora Westcott, and she doesn't like anybody knowing her real name, so she goes by B. Then she meets the lovely boy named Levi and he is very persistent in trying to guess her real name. He discovers that Levi actually runs a charity organization called The Color Project where he helps people who are less fortunate than him and provides them with money for different things that they need. She begins volunteering at The Color Project and her love for both the project and Levi grows. When terrible news about her family member's illness comes to light, B relies on Levi a lot more than she's used to in order to become the backbone the family needs her to be. I am so in love with B and Levi. It is ridiculous. I love them so much. They're adorable. I loved how the romance between Levi and B was very slow and it was not instant love at all. It took a very long time for it to develop, which I loved. I loved literally every single character 
in this book, B is so lovable. A lot of times you want to shake her and be like, what are you doing? Like, you're an idiot. But she cares so much about everybody and her family. She's super funny and cute, and I just loved her so much. She's also very flawed, which made her feel like an actual real person. Levi is like the epitome of Angel Baby Unicorn. Like, you can't not love him if you read this book. Like, he is the ultimate book boyfriend. Gretchen, who is B's best friend, is also a great character. She's so supportive in everything B does. She's always there for her, and I loved her. I also really loved everybody in B's family. Their family dynamic is so awesome. The writing style was also so well done. It had me laughing and crying at different parts and I just, I love this book. This book took me so long to finish because I just didn't want it to end and like the cool part of this book is that every chapter heading was a song so the book actually has a full-on playlist that you can listen to while reading and they mentioned John Bellion who is, if you watch this channel, my favorite artist in the entire world. I'm obsessed with him, so the fact that it was included in the playlist, I was like, this is my new favorite book. Like, it's official. I love it. The next book that I read for the month of May was The Spectacular Now by Tim Tharp. I actually really enjoyed this book. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows 18-year-old Sutter Keeley, who is the life of the party. He's the person who can make everybody forget about their problems. The only thing is, he has a lot of problems himself. His girlfriend Cassidy is threatening to break up with him. His best friend doesn't really want to hang out with him anymore. His mom and sister are always on his back. The writing in this book is so beautiful and so well done. You don't realize all the life wisdom tidbits that are thrown in there until after you've read the book. I just loved it so much. I loved Sutter and Amy as characters. They were both very flawed, which made them feel so much more real. I loved watching them develop throughout the story. I think the book did such a great job at showcasing alcoholism and the ups and downs of life in general. I think that it did an amazing job at showing that one person's actions either negatively or positively influence other people's lives around them. I really liked how we were mostly in Sutter's perspective and he was so optimistic about everything in life but you also got glimpses of how other people were viewing him and what they were thinking about him. I found it really interesting to watch his slow downfall and how others interacted with him. You couldn't help but root for Sutter and want him to get the best of his life and I think that the ending was very well done. It wasn't the happiest of endings but I think that it made the book seem that more real in my opinion and I'm really glad that the author chose to end it the way that he did. Overall I think the book is super important and everybody should read it. The next book I read was George by Alex Gino and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows George who is seen as a boy by everybody around her, although she knows deep down inside she is a girl. When the opportunity to perform Charlotte's Web arises at her school, George decides that she wants to play the role of Charlotte, but her teacher says that, that she is unable to do that because she is a boy. So with the help of her friend Kelly, she decides that they are going to make a plan in order to allow George to play the role of Charlotte and show everybody that she is a girl once and for all. This book is so important, especially because it is a children's book. It probably is going to help so many people. I think that it's going to help so many different people feel validated and understood by others and I think that Alex Gino did a very good job in explaining transgender in a way that kids are going to understand it. This book I read was Isabella For Real by Margie Pallet. Latini. I really did not like this book. I gave it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Isabella Antonelli who is a Italian-American who becomes famous overnight on YouTube from her cousin's videos. The only problem is is that she told a little bit of a lie to her new friends at her new school and now these videos are showing the real Isabella and she needs to try to cover up her lies in order to keep her friends. The book is very fast paced. I read it in one sitting. It's really easy to read. It's a middle grade book and it also includes little comic strips throughout so that kind of brought a new fun aspect to the story. 
But I just didn't like the writing, and I didn't find it entertaining at all. It was kind of tiresome to read for me, and I was just kind of like, okay, I don't really care for any of these characters. And just the whole concept of the book where Isabella told the huge lie, and that was the problem. It would have all been avoided if, you know, you didn't lie, so... I mean, that's the moral of the story, obviously, but it just, it was not for me. The next book I read was Life Happens Next by Terry Truman. This is the sequel to Stuck in Neutral, which I read back in like 2015. I didn't really like this book very much. I kind of think that it was an unnecessary sequel. I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Sean McDaniel, who has cerebral palsy. In the first book, his father had planned to end his misery by murdering him, and he ended up not doing that, and now this is what happens next in his life. Honestly, nothing really happens in his life, so it just seemed unnecessary to me, and I found it very boring. The final book that I read for the month of May, my 23rd book, was Need by Carrie Jones. And I hated this book. It was not good. I ended up giving it a 1.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It follows Zara White, who has been very depressed since her stepfather died of a heart attack in front of her. So she gets shipped off to live with her step-grandmother named Betty in Maine. Zara believes that she has a stalker who has followed her from her old home to Maine. The strange thing is is that he leaves gold dust everywhere he travels. With the help of her new friends, she decides that she is going to try to figure out what her stalker wants from her. So this book is literally just Twilight retold. So it wasn't anything new. All the characters were stereotypical YA characters that you see in every book, like the mean blonde girl who hates you right away, the new girl who everybody loves because she's perfect, the bad boy, the boy who wants her from afar but can't have her. Like, it was just like, ugh, uh, one huge cliche, and I was just like, no. Zara really pissed me off. Literally everything was about this boy that she was seeing. And the most annoying part was every two seconds the boy was just described as being super hot and also he smells like safety. I'm sorry, what does safety smell like exactly? That's what I would like to know, but apparently he smells like it, so he must be a great guy. But yeah, overall, boring read. Did not enjoy it. Would not recommend it. But I like her lipstick. I need to find me some gold lipstick. Alright guys, Jay from the future again. That was part three of my May wrap-up. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!